I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that Diddy's dead. He doesn't have a chance. There's no plausible defense. Don't be so sure. Now, what would I do? Could I represent him? Forget the money. I mean, yeah, the, the guy would have to, it would cost tens of millions of dollars. But could I defend him? Sure. Absolutely. Why? I'm a lawyer. That's what we do. If you were in the emergency room and you were a doctor and I said, could you help mend the leg of, let's say, somebody who was an escapee? Or Yes, because your job as a doctor, your job is not to only mend the innocent or people that you believe to be innocent. Your job is to do your profession for everyone. My problem would be if I had a moral impediment, something that got in the way, and something that, dare I say, got in the way of performing zealously. I couldn't cross-examine or bully somebody that I thought was, was, you know, a victim of this. But somebody who was lying? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you what his defense would be. Very simple. I'd find out what what cases do we what what charges do we have that I can do anything about. Well, one of them is weapons charges. Sorry, my friend. S O L on that. Sorry. You got the gun? Did you have the license? Is there some some technical uh, problem? Yeah. Well, that's it. Sorry about that. Filing off numbers. Plead to that. What else is there? But racketeering. See, it all comes down to whether. He coerced through force, coercion, threat, coerced these women and boys, perhaps, to appear in these freak-offs, to appear, to, to either be house prostitutes, to traffic in human beings like chattel and cattle. Could that be? The first thing I would say is, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you may not like this guy. You may not like his lifestyle. You may not like anything about him or his friends or his music or his clothes. Or, but that's not why you're here. But my friends, my jurors, my fellow jurors, ladies and gentlemen, there isn't a woman there who was pulled off the streets forced to do anything, assuming this to be true now. I mean, there, there, there may be, because there are some civil cases that have nothing to do with the racketeering enterprise. Keep in mind this. There are things he may have done independent of the criminal enterprise, that, that cabal, that, that coven, so to speak. But if I were to say there isn't a woman who was forced... He had a waiting list of women who knew exactly what this was about. To party, women who came back, repeat victims, they could have left any time they wanted. They're not going to be chased down. These weren't pulled into, again, the white van. And when you want to talk about that other fellow, that guy whose name begins with the fifth letter, the one who was, you know, theoretically... Had he gone to trial, he would have said, look, I was a lot of things too, but, but in terms of fraud, coercion, I may have been involved in underage activities. That's one thing. But, but forcing these women? No way. No way. You got the wrong guy here, my friends. No, no, no. You got the wrong person. Sorry. Never did that. I might have been a, a real, you know, I might have done some terrible things. But this is, think about it in terms of almost like slavery. You're asking, did I do something which was tantamount to slavery? And the answer is, I did he would say, no, I didn't. Because these women came out of the woodwork. They had careers. Same thing with Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. I mean, you can say whatever you want about him, but, you know, there are there is sexual battery and those things that I have seen where people have been, I mean, they, they don't even know these people. They've been grabbed or they've been... 
They've been seriously, I mean, serious. Not that this isn't, not that serious activity wasn't, uh, didn't occur. We're talking about racketeering. We're talking about, did you come back? Did you, were you forced to come back? Were you, is this, is this what you were forced to do? Or did you say, yeah, I, I did it until I got tired of it or until I realized I wasn't going anywhere or until I, maybe they were taking videos, maybe later on, but that's different. It is a different story. It is completely different. It is different from anything you've ever seen. For somebody to go into something understandably, look, we're hearing right now stories for the first time of things that happened at the Playboy Mansion in the grotto and Days that go back with the Rat Pack and casting couches and Louis B. Mayer and you name it. And everybody there is, everybody that there is, we have heard these stories left and right since the beginning of time. And unfortunately, and and by the way, remember, there are some women also who have gotten into the world of sex trafficking or, excuse me, sex uh, uh, trade, sex work, and that sort of prostitution, who went into it not being pulled into, not being pulled off the streets. Again, not in all cases, but there have been people who entered into the most seamy and disgusting, dank, dark, dungeness horrors of the world. They did this knowingly. And without reservation, that may be hard to believe, but a jury would say, wow, I didn't know this. Let me give you a list of all the women. On any freak off, we had a a bet. We have 50. We would go pick them up, take them home. We did. They weren't chained. Now, again, that's not to say that this didn't happen. But if my recitation of the facts are such, I would have to educate the jury into understanding a new form of life and a new form of, of sexual activity, which is disgusting and vile and loathsome, but in this particular case, is not against the law. What do you think? So comment as you see fit.